So for this week's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make these coasters. And what's kind of cool about these coasters and the way I make them is that you can make a bunch at a time. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make four at a time, but even just making the size of your base bigger, you can make more and more. These would be great for bazaars or craft fairs or even on Etsy or gifts or for yourself or whomever. They'd make a really great hostess gift. I can just see these maybe in a basket with some mugs or uh, something that matched like a table runner or something like that. They're a lot of fun to make. But before we get started with the tutorial, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you as always for joining me for this tutorial. So I use Christmas fabrics, but I've made these using other fabrics too. And they're really wonderful to customize for the holidays or even events. They're so easy to make. You could even like do birthday party themed or whatever you wanted to. I have some that I made for Thanksgiving. I have some that are just cozy coffee mugs and they're just a lot of fun and a little bit addictive when you start making them. So we're gonna start with our fabric selection and then move on from there on how to make these coasters. The fabrics you'll need for this project are as follows. You'll need one 11 inch square of non-directional fabric, one 12 inch square of cotton batting. Now I use cotton, but you could use a polyester. I just use cotton because it's more absorbent and because these are coasters, uh, it just to me makes more sense. I've also seen where people use denim scraps as well. So uh, you just need something for the inside. You will also need four five inch squares of backing fabric for the back of your coasters. As for general supplies, you'll need a rotary cutter, rotary mat, uh, some low tack tape. So that can be painter's tape or masking tape or even washi tape, a ruler that is five inches or larger, an iron and ironing board, sewing machine thread, uh, and the thread can be matching or it can be a uh, contrasting thread. Uh, and I talk about that a little bit more later. It's also optional to have a walking foot. It's helpful, but it's not necessary. And a stitch in the ditch foot. Again, it's not necessary, but it is helpful. So I wanted to pick some fabric from this uh, line of fabric that I got a few weeks ago. This is the Farmhouse Christmas. Uh, I feature this in my vlog. Uh, but anyway, I thought that this would, these are really pretty colors and uh, they'd really make some nice coasters. So I want to pick a fabric that is non-directional, okay, in an all-over pattern. And that's gonna be the front of my coaster. So I really, really love these poinsettias. I think I'm gonna go with this one, okay? And I think that would make some really pretty coasters. For the backing, I'm going to pick something also non-directional, especially if you're a beginner, this is a really good tip. It's just gonna make your life a little bit easier. Now, once you're more advanced, you could you know, do some more directional fabrics, but right now, as you're learning, definitely stick with a non-directional. So I'm gonna pick this one and then Another tip is matching the background of the featured fabric with the backing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. With these coasters, you can see I matched the backing with the uh, background of the print. And in doing that, it just allows for if anything is peeking through along that edge, it's not noticeable. It also helps you with thread selection. Now you don't have to do that, for example, for this one, I used this uh, really cute um, snowman print and I uh, used a red and black plaid on the back. Again, it's directional. I've been sewing for a long time, so I, you know, I can do that a little easier than somebody who maybe is just starting. But you can see there is some of it peeking through. So it's just something you wanna be aware of. To make your life easy, pick something that matches that background. So I'm going to do that now and I don't think I have a lot of choices oh I have this this would match the background these little snowflakes and they're very cute so I am going to do that just for this demonstration to show you what I'm talking about I'm going to take this red poinsettia fabric go over and cut it into an 11 inch square and then I'm going to make my five inch squares four of them out of this all right so I have my 11 by 11 inch square and then I also have a 12 by 12 inch batting, piece of batting, and I'm just using a cotton batting that I had, just a piece of scrap. And I also have my backings. Now the backings I'm gonna put aside, these are the four uh, five and a half inch squares, and I'm just gonna set them aside. We're not using them yet. So we are going to just use this right now. And what we're going to do is quilt this. So it's just the batting and the top part. So that's not usually what you do usually. 
uh, you would have it sandwiched with a backing too. But for this project, you don't do that. You're gonna quilt right on that batting. So I'm just gonna do a simple quilting technique. I'm just gonna do some lines. I do wanna make sure it's sort of close together because we're gonna be cutting this up afterward and you don't want it to fall apart or not have a quilted area. So I'm just gonna mark it with some masking tape and then go over to my machine and use my walking foot to quilt this. And for the thread, I'm going to use a red thread. Now you could use something that coordinates, like the green might be nice. Actually, maybe I'll use the green uh, because it would just give that pop of color and a, I don't know, some more interest to it. But just be careful because if you're not great at quilting, it will show up and it might not be necessarily the look you want to have. So I think I will use a green thread for this. So I'm just gonna simply mark this with a piece of masking tape, corner to corner, okay? And then I'm gonna sew along this and along this, and I'm gonna keep going like that. All right, so I have my line marked, I have my walking foot on my machine, and I have my stitch length turned up to uh, 3.1. I just like it a little longer for this. And I'm gonna start stitching. I'm gonna pull some of this off because it's sticking to the bed of my machine, so it's a little long. All right, I'll fast forward through this part. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna start stitching along that tape. Be careful not to uh, stitch the tape, although it's not the end of the world. We can work around that too. Here we go. So I stitched on both sides of this uh, tape and I'm just gonna pull this off and if there's enough stickiness to it, I'm just going to move it over right along that line and stitch on the other side of that. And I'm gonna do that on both sides and then I'm gonna go back and do it the other direction. So I'm gonna do it the diagonal this way. And again, I'll fast forward this part so you can see. Oh, now here's a good example of uh, me uh, sewing over that tape. So you just kind of pull it out carefully. We're gonna trim this up so it's not gonna matter that much. Just carefully, you might have to take some tweezers in and pull these out, but hey, it happens. Okay, once you get that finished, and you can see that here, it's all going the same direction, the diagonal, I still need to get that tape off, which I will. Uh, you're gonna now go the opposite direction, do the same thing. So we're gonna lay the tape going this way. And that's gonna give us that cross hatch, like a lattice type of pattern. So I'm gonna do that now. And so the other direction. Just corner to corner. And again, it's just a guide no one's gonna know if you're a little off. Don't worry about that. And just gives you a nice guideline. And this is just painter's tape, by the way. And you can use different sizes, of course, uh, different widths. All right. So this is finished and you can see all of the quilting. If we turn it over, you can see the quilting on the back, which this is gonna get trimmed up. So next we're gonna cut this up and I'll show you what happens next. Okay, so I totally messed up and when I originally recorded, uh, I didn't hit record for the segment. So I had to go back and make another sample because I didn't have enough of this fabric to create 
another sample. So I am changing the fabrics, please forgive me. It's just for this portion, we'll go back to this fabric afterward because this is the segment that didn't record. So basically what you did was take a piece of fabric and make it a quilted piece of fabric. So uh, this is the quilted piece of fabric and we're gonna trim this down to four five inch squares for our coasters. So let's do that now. So I, what I like to do is just cut it in half and then in half again, making basically five and a half inch segments, but they do not have to be perfect because we're gonna trim them down and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Okay. So now that I have these chunks, I'm going to place them onto my rotating mat, take my five inch ruler and trim around it. So I get perfect five inch squares. And you're gonna do that to all four pieces. So now you're just going to take that back ink fabric and place it uh, right sides together on top. And we're gonna sew around uh, the outside using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, for this step, we're going to sew around the outside. Now a walking foot will really help you out with this step, but it is absolutely not necessary. Just take your time with it. Um, you can also uh, pin these together or even baste them together if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to. Uh, if you're more experienced, don't worry about it. If you are new, you might want to. So I'm just going to start on an edge and I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm also gonna use a smaller uh, stitch length. I'm gonna take it to a two uh, because I want it nice and tight, especially on those corners when we go to turn it. So. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna take a few stitches and just back tack it. And you're gonna go a quarter inch from the corner Again, mark this if you're not really good at eyeballing it. Leave your needle in, turn, and then keep going. Same thing at this corner. Turn it. And keep going. And then you're coming back to that side and you wanna leave a nice opening, back stitch, and lock that stitch in. Clip your threads, which always, always helps everything look better. And there you can see how I went around the outside. So I'm gonna do all of these, and then I'm going to trim those corners and show you how I turn it. All right, so these are all finished. Uh, I sewed around all the outside, and I'm gonna trim them. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to trim that corner like that, not cutting that seam, okay? And then I like to just taper these like that. Now, it is really tempting to go in and trim this entire seam down. Don't do it because you definitely want to have a little bit of give here for your turn, okay? So trust me on that. Just leave the seams as they are, except for those corners and tapering them. So you're gonna do that to all of them. And then we're gonna turn it. All right, so they're all trimmed. Get rid of my edges here. And now we are going to turn them and you're gonna just reach into that opening, trim your threads, and you are going to turn it. Now, uh, I did forget to mention, I did press these after I sewed them. That's one of the best things you can do as a maker is press between each step. That iron will help you with so many different things. It'll help things lie flat and just look neat and crisp. So I'm just gonna reach in and turn these. And I'm not real worried about the corners yet, I'm just gonna turn them, just to get them set.
and I'll push out those corners when I get them all done here. I'll do that all at once. All right, so once you have it turned uh, outside right, uh, you're just gonna go in with something that has a blunt edge. Uh, either a, I have a chopstick here or this turner or even a pencil with a very uh, dull point. Anything like that that would not be so sharp that it's going to push through like a pair of scissors or something, but um, is pointy enough that it's going to give you a crisp edge and corner. So you're going to just stick that into the hole and push out those corners. And after you get them really good, pushed out and even the edges here pushed out not too hard you don't want to go through uh, you're going to press it and you're going to make sure that you turn cutting any threads that you have loose threads like that one but you're going to make sure you turn that edge under that you used as an opening and press it real well. So you, you might have to fidget with that a little bit, but uh, it will work. So I'm going to just hit this with the iron, maybe even hit it with a little steam, because you really want this flat, just like that. So you can see my opening here. And I could uh, stitch this shut uh, with by hand just to make sure it stays shut or even put a little bit of glue in here, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna put a little bit of Elmer's glue in there. This one's pretty good, but you'll see some of them might not be and we'll need that. Um, and I just wanna show you how to do that. Again, the more you sew, the more you get used to doing stuff like this, the easier it becomes, but it might be very fidgety for a while. So I'm just gonna put not much, but just a little bit. You can see there's just a tiny bit of glue and I'm just gonna squeeze that shut and clip it. And then I'm going to let it dry for, I don't know, five minutes or so before I sew it because I don't wanna gum up my needle. Now, okay, so now that I have these all turned, pressed, ready to go, I have them clipped where I glued them, I am going to sew around that edge. So I'm gonna use uh, a foot that has a flange on it, and this is a stitch in the ditch foot, so I'm just going to replace that on my machine. If you don't have that, don't worry, you can uh, just use a, your regular foot, uh, but this will just help me a little bit, and if you do have it, it's a really great tool for doing stuff like this. All right, I'm also going to put my uh, needle over a little bit and uh, that's also going to let me run this edge along that flange. Now here's a few tips with doing this. Actually I'm going to use this one. I'm not, this one's not turning out. I might have to remake him. Anyway, this is how you're going to do this. You're going to start on an edge that's opposite or adjacent I guess to this turned point. This turn point is going to be a little finicky so you want to kind of do that last or at least not first. You could even do over here if you want to but you don't want to start here. It If it gets a little out of whack it's going to really be uh, noticeable so start somewhere else like that's adjacent to it. So you're going to just go in push your fabric up against that flange and if you have that and if not you're going to just make sure you have a ledge or something that's going you're going to be able to push up against this. You can make one with tape or uh, there's a few things on the market. And then to start, you're going to turn your stitch length down quite a bit to like one and then start stitching. And then you're going to turn it up. That's gonna help lock your stitches. So start, take a few stitches, turn it up to your 3.1 for your top stitching and go around. Now when you get to the corner, you want a nice crisp corner, so you're gonna leave your needle in, turn your piece, and stitch. Now when you get to the side that has the opening, you just wanna be extra careful as you go along. Just get it on that edge. And then when you come back to where you started, you're gonna take a few stitches and then turn that stitch length down to a one again. And that's gonna help lock those stitches. So 
it's not real bulky there. Okay, and that's how you top stitch the edge. Just like that. You're gonna do that to all of these and then you are finished there. That's how you make your coasters four at a time. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please give me that thumbs up if you did and consider subscribing. It is free to subscribe and uh, it really helps me out too. So if you have any questions, as always, please comment below and I'll be happy to give you any advice or feedback or whatever you may need on this project. Have a great week. Enjoy making these coasters and make sure you take some time to sew. I'll see you soon. Bye.